Good afternoon. So I have been upstairs practicing a little bit in my studio and I got to thinking I'd like to share with you some of the things that we've been talking about all week in our master classes and particularly what I talked about in two of my lectures. The first one is how to practice technique in different ways to practice it to become more comfortable with it. And the second one is to combine practicing your technique with the musical line and the dynamics and everything else that you want to do in the music. Now, performing musically is constantly evolving. So, you know, I might play it one way really well and I'll never play it that way again. Um, it's always gonna be a little bit different. But this is a piece by um, Silvestrini for solo oboe, and it's a set of six etudes based on paintings by French artists. This first one is based on the painting by Claude Monet. It was painted in 1870, uh, titled Hotel des Roches Noires au Trois and it's uh, basically saying at the hotel in the evening with lots of activity, people are having fun and um, in a party kind of a spirit. And so I'm going to try and express that in my music while I'm playing. So one of the first things I talked about in the last master class was being able to play with ease. And that's something, especially as an oboist, I'm constantly working on. I have a bad habit of getting really tense. So I'm really trying to improve that in my own playing. So the first thing I want to demonstrate for you is I'm practicing four lines of music. And um, it's straight 30 second notes. One of the previous master classes I did up talking about how to practice, I talked about taking it at different rhythms to help you train your fingers how those notes should go. And since I'm at kind of a beginning stage of practicing this, um, I'm going to demonstrate first that technique. So I'm going to start by playing two long notes followed by two short notes. I'm changing the rhythms, okay? Two long notes followed by two short notes. So in addition to trying to figure out the notes and change those rhythms around, I'm also trying to do the dynamics and thinking about what I want to do with the line. So that was two long notes followed by two short notes. This one is harder for me. I'm going to do one long note, two short notes, and a long note. So I'll be thinking one, two, and three, one, two, and three. As you're watching, especially if you're a woodwind player, notice how I'm trying to keep my fingers really close to the keys. I am trying to stay relaxed, but it's, it's um, you know, kind of I have to really think hard right now at this point. The last one I'm doing is going to be two longs followed by two shorts.
for just a second, but okay. So after I've practiced each one of those little changes, you know, there's other ways I could do this. I could do like that at eight sixteenths. change it around doing 16th dotted eighth. Any kind of rhythms that you can do to train your fingers. So now I'm going to play it as written. And I'm going to now try and not think about the technique, just let my hands do what I've been training them to do and try and think about the music like I talked about in the lecture from yesterday. Let me try that again. shot. I think I can do it just a little bit better. <laughs> Anyhow, this is a piece I'm going to keep on working on it. That's just four lines of this piece and it's a piece I hope to play for you in a couple of weeks when you guys do your recitals. My goal is to have this playable by May 15th and I'll try and record it and have it here. I'm trying to apply everything that I'm telling you to do in your practice and it's really been fun for me to just revisit some of those things that I've done my whole life but it just is fun to think again, oh let me try these different things and uh, so I, I picked a challenging piece on purpose because I wanted it to be something I would really have to work hard on. So I hope you enjoy that and wish me luck these next couple of weeks. <laughs>